Hi, I'm Andreas Glad and this is Houdini for Games. By popular request, today we're gonna create a nice little cloudscape for Unreal Engine 4. And we'll do this by creating a sky rig in Houdini, convert it to a mesh and use it as a spawn surface. We'll also have a quick look at setting up some basic textures to use for this effect. But let's get started in Houdini. First, let's create a sky rig. So head over to the Cloud Effects tab and hit Sky Rig and hit Enter to get a default 1x1x1 one by one by one box, which is a bit big. So let's reduce it in Y by going to the binding box and reducing it to 0.5. And that will give us a box that fits our clouds a bit better and we won't waste voxels on stuff we don't use. And to be able to see the details that we already got, let's drop in a directional light by control clicking the directional light button to drop a light in at the camera position. And now we can see that we do have something that looks a bit like clouds. Cool. So if you jump into the sky rig node and check out the sky, you can see that we have a bunch of cool settings here for density and noise and advection. But for this tutorial, let's just reduce the coverage a bit and see what that gets us. And at the moment, there's a bit too much cloudiness going on. Maybe something like that. I'm liking the amount of clouds, but I am not loving the thick shape here on the edge. The big sausage looking thing. So let's go into the noise and change the offset a bit and see what we get instead. Let's just drop in a random number and that's looking better. It's not as noticeable. Any big shapes and... It's looking quite cloudy. It is, however, looking a bit low res, so let's increase the resolution by reducing the voxel size by, let's say, half. So that's looking cool. Now, to get this into Unreal, we need to convert this to a mesh so we can use that to spawn particles on. So there are a few ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you the way that I prefer. It's in two steps. First, you drop down a Convert VDB node, and this you leave at the default, which means that it will convert to a volume. So we're converting from a VDB volume to a regular volume. And the reason for this is so we can use a old uh, convert node instead of the convert VDB. And the reason that we're not converting straight from VDB to Polygon is simply that I like the mesh we get from the convert node better. So let's drop down the convert, enable it, and watch in terror as our volume disappears. That's because we haven't set what offset it should be using. So just nudge the volume offset and you should get a mesh looking something like this. And now that it's a mesh, I see that it still has a bit too much coverage. So we can simply go back up to the sky node and density. And let's just tweak it a bit and reduce the coverage a bit more. And you can also change the position of the key by typing in values. If you have a specific value in mind or a specific amount of coverage that you're after. And that's going the wrong way. We want less coverage, not more. Cool, I like that. This all depends on what you're after for your scene, but this is what I'm gonna go with. Next, let's have a look at the point count, and middle mouse, and it's using 15,000 points, which might be a bit on the high side. So let's fix that by dropping in a poly reduce node. And since the mesh is just gonna be used as a spawn surface, we truly don't care what it looks like, so let's reduce it by 50%. And the general shape is still there, so this is gonna work fine. And now we're just 8,000 points, and you can reduce it further if you need to. Now, you could export it like this, but in some versions of Houdini, there's a quirk where meshes created from the Skyrig would yield an empty FBX file, and to avoid that potential headache, let's do the Bejeo run trip. And that's done like this. So you right click your node and you hit save and geometry. And then you tell it where to save that geometry. And I'm going to go for a temp folder. So e colon slash temp. And let's just call it something like sky spawn mesh dot pgo. And before you hit accept, hit control C to copy it and then accept. And then we're going to drop in a file node and go up to geometry file and control V and there you got your file. And now all of the oddities have been cleared out and this will export just fine. But before we export, I wanna do one more thing. Since lights and particles are not the best friends in Unreal, we're gonna fake it a bit. So we're gonna set up a poor man's light and bake it to a vertex color of the mesh. This is done by grabbing the dot product between uh, any light direction and the normal of the mesh. So first we need to add some normals to the points. So let's drop down a normal node 
set it to add normals to points like so and if we jump over to the geometry spreadsheet we can see that we now have normals on our points that's good and now we're going to do some heavy duty coding so let's drop down a point wrangle and in there we're going to write three rows of code first up we need to add in a light direction and you could do that as a variable or an attribute and because I like attributes, I'm going to add it in as an attribute. So we're going to start by typing V at to initialize the vector. We're going to call it light direction or light dir. And it's going to be equal to, and then we have to add in a curly bracket and then our light direction. So we're going to add curly bracket, one, zero, zero, end curly bracket, and then a semicolon. And now if you jump back to the geometry spreadsheet, we have a light direction. So that's cool. Next, we need to initialize our vertex color. And you can do that by dropping in a color node or by typing V at CD, semicolon. And that will bring in a vertex color of one. And now for our final trick, we're gonna set the vertex color to be the dot product of the light direction and the normal. And if you've ever used a Fresnel function, that's just a dot product facing the camera. And now we're gonna make it face the light direction. So let's type at CD cd equals dot parentheses and at lighter comma at n and parentheses and a semicolon and hit somewhere else to update it and now you can see your color updated and let's have a look at the mesh and we seem to have some super sharp shadows but if we turn off the light in the viewport by hitting this button we can see that we only have vertex color, but it still looks like it's lit. And we can use this color to colorize the particles in Unreal to fake that the particles on the backside of a cloud are darker than the ones on the front. Now, the clouds we're gonna create are gonna be quite thin, so we don't need these sharp values between zero and one. So let's add one to our color, so we get a value between one and two instead. And there we go, now we only get slight shifting in the darkness. So that's gonna look cool. Now, before we export this, let's uh, drop in a transform node and scale this up a bit. Since in unreal terms, this is roughly the size of a stamp. So let's bring the uniform scale up to a hundred. And there we go. It's now ready to be exported. First, I recommend that you rename your node into something that you know what it is, because this is what it's gonna show up in unreal. So let's call this something like sky spawn mesh. Cool. Let's hit File and Export Filmbox FPX and browse to where you want to save it and give it a cool name, something like Skyspawn Mesh version 1.fbx. Hit Accept and then you're going to specify what you want to export and what your Skyspawn Mesh, Accept Pattern and hit Export. And with that, we're done with Houdini. So let's jump over to Unreal. And in here, we're going to start out by importing our mesh. So go Import. Find your mesh, hit open. And before you hit import, make sure that you click skeletal mesh, since that's the only type of mesh that you can actually use as a spawn surface in Unreal. So hit import and it will build a skeleton for you with just one bone and you don't need to worry about it. Next, you need to set up a particle system. So let's drop into folder and create new particle system. Let's call it something like FX underscore Cloudscape 01 and open that up. And this is not gonna be your average particle system as we're pretty much gonna use it just to place camera facing sprites out in the world. And because of that, we only need one emitter loop. So it only spawns once. And we also don't want a constant spawn rate, so set that down to zero and add a burst instead. And this is where you specify how many cloud particles you want. So let's go with something like 100 for now. And since the particles are just going to spawn and stay there, we don't want them to have a lifetime either. So let's change this to our constant distribution and leave it at zero so they will live forever. We also don't want it to have any velocity since that will look weird and you're not going to use the color over life, so delete those. So now you have a particle system that does pretty much nothing, but now we need to add in the magic module, and that is the location module called scale vert surface location. We're going to set the source type to use um, surfaces, 
And let's also give it a, a memorable name in the scale mesh actor param name slot. So let's go for sky actor or something and hit control C so it's easier to use later. And that's the initial system done. So let's drop that into the level. Like so, and that's looking beautiful and somewhat pointless. And let's also drop in our mesh since we need that to be able to spawn from it. So grab the skeletal mesh and drop it in. And it's still puny, so let's scale it up by something like 10. And that will make it easier to work with. Now, to hook up the particle system to the mesh, we need to find the particle system. And then we're going to add an instance parameter over here. So hit the plus, and then you're going to paste in your sky actor. That's where you give it a good name. Set the param type to be an actor. And then point the actor to our sky mesh. Uh, sky spawn mesh. Yeah. And now you have particles all over your clouds. However, you're still seeing the cloud mesh and that's not something we want since we only want the fluffy, nice and sprites showing up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the mesh and scroll down to rendering. Scroll, 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 there we go. And then you're gonna untick render in main pass. And that will make it go invisible. And now we're getting somewhere. So now you can actually start moving and scaling your cloud mesh to position them where you want them in the scene. So maybe we scale them up a bit. How about something like 500? Make them really big, like so. And then we move them out and push them into the uh, mountains in the background to give it a nice and mysterious feel. Cool. Something like that. A bit outside of the play area. And you can, of course, just adjust this as you want later. And let's grab our effect. And it's still here. So what we need to do is that we need to update it. So we start in level and now we can't see anything because the particles are tiny and spread out all over the world. So let's increase the size. Something like 8000 should be enough. Now we're seeing them. And let's set the minimum to something like 5000. Cool, so now we're actually starting to see these things. And it's become apparent that they don't look a whole lot like clouds. So let's jump over to Photoshop and set up a couple of basic textures for this. So here we got a new empty document and the first thing to do is set up your grids and guides. So let's head up to view and show um, grid. There we go. Now you'll always know where the center of it is. And we're going to start by creating our alpha. So let's hit Shift F5 and fill the background with black. And this first texture is going to be our detail texture. So we need some fairly sharp cloud-like images to base it off. And the easiest way to do that is by either waiting for a sunny day with some clouds in the sky, go out and take a few pictures and use that. Or you buy some stock footage and use that. And that's my approach. Or if you're really in a pinch, you can grab a couple of free brushes with clouds somewhere on the internet. But let's have a look at the approach when using stock footage. So I'm going to load up my image containing a bunch of clouds. There we go. And I'm just going to grab a selection of, of the clouds that I like. So I'm going to grab the one on the top left. Just roughly grab that. And maybe skip that little separate part. Like so and then just uh, copy and paste. And then I transform this to fit in one of these uh, squares since we want four clouds so we can have some variations. Just squish it in there. Since we're gonna randomly rotate the particle anyway, uh, it's not gonna matter too much. I'm trying to use the space fairly well without distorting it. And then you can go in and start removing things like maybe this edge thing here doesn't look too good or too harsh highlight somewhere and just modify it to make it look good like so. And then when you're happy with it, you can grab a selection of the square it's in and invert it and hit delete so you don't have any overlap with the other squares. And then you go ahead and do that three more times so you fill up the, all the squares. And like a good TV chef, I've already got one of those prepared. So. Let's have a look at that. And let's use this to create the alpha. So go ahead and select all. 
hit Control C and let's head over to the channels and add a new one and Control V and you now have an alpha. Now, if you leave it like this, you'll probably end up with dark edges around all of your clouds and that's not gonna look good at all. So let's add in a new layer and fill that with white. And let's make our clouds uh, use screen. And let's uh, just start bringing the opacity down of our white layer to something like this. So you have a bit of detail, but it's mostly white and bright gray. All right. So that's our first detail texture. Let's also set up um, a very soft and smoky one. So let's grab another new document. And again, let's fill the background with black. And since this is going to be a very soft texture, the most important thing is that we don't get any hard edges. And a way to accomplish this is by taking a really big brush and setting the hardness down to zero and you're just painting a big white blob in the middle of a, a new layer. And on top of that, we're going to take another piece of stock footage, and this time of some generic smoke or clouds or whatever you can find. And you just drag it into the uh, image and then you start scaling it up and positioning it, making sure that it fills the space of the white blob underneath. So you just scale it up a bit, and position it, maybe a bit more, something like that. And then hit enter. And then you change the blend mode to multiply. And all of a sudden you have a big, soft, blobby smoke kind of thing. And maybe you need to scale the smoke down to get a bit more detail back. But what you can do now to get a bit more interesting shapes on the edges or to remove things that you don't like is that you just use the smudge tool and smudge the blob layer. You can see that you can paint away things and change the amount of alpha that's uh, coming through to the details. And in this way you can fairly quickly get that really nice soft smoke texture set up. So when you're happy with how that looks, you do the same thing as you did with the detail texture. You, you know, copy it and you paste it in and shove it into one of the corners and do that as many times as you find it fun. And then simply use this as your, the base for your alpha and do the same thing we did for the detail texture. For my texture, I made two frames since the soft smoke doesn't need as many variations. So with the textures done, let's jump back to Unreal. So go ahead and import both of the textures. So right click, import, grab the sharp texture and open. And you could have grabbed the other one as well, but let's import that. Soft, open, and there we go. Now you need to set up a material for this. So let's jump over to that folder. Right click, new material. Let's call this something like M underscore cloud particles. And open that up. And now we're going to do a couple of things that might not make sense right away, but hopefully I'll be able to explain it. First, we're going to set this to translucent. So far, all good. And then we're going to make it an unlit material. And that's for two reasons. One is to save a bit of performance. This is going to be a very heavy effect in the end. And the second is that the unreal way of lighting particles isn't really that good. So instead, we're going to try to rely on the vertex color we baked into our mesh. So let's start building this. So first we're going to drop in a sub UV node to read in the texture like so. And then we're going to grab a particle color so we can control the color from the particle system and multiply these together. So drop in two multiplies, do the alpha with the alpha down there. Cool. And the color with the color. And you can go ahead and plug the color into emissive. We're going to do a bit more magic with the opacity, so leave that for now. But we have an error, and that's because we haven't assigned a texture yet. So let's jump out to our content browser and grab one. Go to textures and just grab the sharp one. And just assign it, and the error is gone. OK, so for the alpha, there are three things that we need to do. First. We're going to fade it by camera depth so you don't get clipping once you're passing through clouds. And the second thing is that we're going to fade it by Fresnel. And that might be a bit counterintuitive since these are camera facing sprites. But once the big cloud sprites are coming to the sides of the screen, it will be noticeable that they are rotating around to face the screen. So if we just fade it by Fresnel, most of that should go away. 
And the last step is by adding a depth fade so we don't get any harsh intersections with the geometry of the world. So let's start by dropping in a camera depth fade node. Like so, and add in a constant to control this. And you can change this all later, but let's give it a default value. And let's start the fade about five meters from the camera. So 5,000 units. Cool. And then you're going to multiply this by the rest of the opacity chain. So grab a multiply, plug these together, move it out of the way. And let's drop in a Fresnel and start setting that up. So Fresnel, like so. And let's give that one a constant as well to use for the exponent, get a good default value. And we want this to fade pretty much as soon as it's not facing straight towards the camera. So we're going to go with an extreme value. So something like 0 0.05. And by default, it's doing the opposite of what we need. So let's drop in a one minus. So we don't fade the particles away when they're actually facing the camera. And drop in another multiply. And slap these together, like so. And the final step is to drop in a depth fade node. Grab that there, just shove the opacity in there, and we can set up the distance to something like 500. And you can go back and tweak all of this later if you need it, depending on your scene. And now simply plug that into opacity and the material is done. Well, almost. You need to set the texture to be a parameter so you can set up your material instances to accept different textures. So simply right click and convert to parameter. And now it's done. Hit apply and save. And let's go ahead and set up our material instances. So go to material, right click, create material instance. And this is going to be our sharp texture. And let's make one more, create, and this one's going to be called soft. And let's open that one up and change the texture. So enable this and find our tea smoke soft and apply that. Save and your materials are done. And let's start adding them into the particle system. So let's open that up like so. And then on the Oh, there we go. There we got our particles. They're a bit big now. Cool. And under required, let's just point it to our new material. So let's go ahead and content browser, grab the sharp material folder. There we go. Grab that, assign, and it's going to do its thing and eventually disappear. And that's because it doesn't have a color value. And we don't want to give it an initial color. We want it to inherit vertex color on the scale vert module. It will still be gone inside of here. But if we jump out into the level, we can see that we now have the beginnings of a cloud system. There are, however, a couple of things that we need to fix with this. Uh, first up, we probably need to set up the sub UV since now we're seeing four clouds on every single sprite. So let's go to the required node, hit the sub UV section and give it two by two. And set the interpolation to random, since we only want random static frames. And to make it actually do that, we need to add a sub UV module. So drop in a sub UV index. And now you have random clouds from all over your texture. And that's starting to look interesting. But right now, they're all rotated the same. So let's drop in an initial rotation. And we just hedge our bets by setting this to minus one to one so it can be rotated freely. Cloud needs its freedom. And it also looks better with a bit of variation in the rotation. Next, we need to be able to control the color. And we're going to do that with a scale color over life node. And that works just like a regular color over life node, except this scales the color, meaning that we can use it uh, alongside the vertex color we're inheriting from the mesh. And we can first go ahead and remove this last point since our particles live forever, so they won't scale over life. And then we can go ahead and tint it a bit, maybe give it a nice bluish sky color, something like that. Now I want to have a look at a problem with the orientation. If you go above the clouds right now and look down upon them and wiggle your head back and forth, you're going to get this weird rolling in. Yeah, if you see it here with where there are a bit more particles. You can fix that by adding in a lock axis module. Orientation, lock axis. And then we tell it it can only rotate around Z. 
So now if we go above some particles, so we'll grab a few over here, and wiggle our head, they don't move as much. However, if you look straight down, it's fading out due to our Fresnel, and that's usually an acceptable compromise. So that's the bulk of the emitter done. So let's give it a name so we know what it is, like sharp. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate it and make this one be the soft one. So let's call it soft. Let's fix the material. Jump over, find it over in the material folder. Grab soft and assign it like so. And we can immediately see that this has different sub UVs. So let's fix that. These were two by one. Okay, cool. And now for our final trick, we're gonna make this effect a lot more expensive. Having a big cloudscape is gonna cost a lot, no matter how you do it, but there are ways you can minimize the cost and we can have a look at that later. But now we're gonna increase the count by a lot. So let's set the soft to a count of a thousand. And let's give the sharp kind of 500. And now the cloud looks a lot cooler, but it's also a lot more expensive. So don't build this effect and drop it into an already populated level and then wonder why it's not running in 90 FPS on VR anymore. It is gonna be heavy and you're gonna be, have to be prepared to pay for that. You can make it a bit cheaper by having more variance in height of your cloud so you don't have to look through as many layers of them at all times and so on. But to improve the look of this, now you could go back and polish the textures in Photoshop to get them to look the way you want them. You could add hero clouds by sculpting them in Houdini and using the same technique to export them. If you want to make thicker looking clouds, you can go back to Houdini and tweak the fake light we applied and make it a bit harsher and more contrasty. There are a ton of possibilities and this is where you start polishing and really making this look cool. So I hope you've learned something from this and thanks for watching.